Hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sasha, and today I'm going to do my worst books I read in 2018. This is one of my favorite videos to watch that booktubers make um, at the end of the year, the start of the year, and I thought I would join in. You know, so many people do this so well. They execute it in such a way that it is genuinely funny and informative. And I wanted to see if I could do something similar. Um, and before we get started, I would just like to be acknowledged that I am wearing rainbow unicorn slippers. Look at his little face. Oh my gosh. Also, by the way, I'm not drinking tea in a way that's like spilling tea. I just... I <laughs> genuinely wanted to drink tea, so. The first book I am going to be talking about, and this is one that was so bad it was almost good, is Meg by Steve Alton. I started this book because, well, number one, the movie was coming out, and it looked really cool. You know, giant sharks. I was also reading it because I joined in on the Megalong which was hosted by uh, The Perks of Books, and she seemed so psyched. I was like, you know, if she's this excited about it, it has to be good. Um, that wasn't true. <laughs> it was awful, but like, it was hilariously awful, if that makes any sense. The One of the things that wasn't hilarious was its rampant misogyny. Like, there were so many instances where I, like, winced both inwardly and outwardly because of the descriptions of women. Just calling, like, talking about women's weight when they weren't talking about men's weight. There was, the the main character's love interest um, is Asian, and she was constantly referred to as an Asian beauty, and that just made me so uncomfortable like she's just a beauty right she doesn't have to be a specifically Asian beauty I mean why why would you even it seems so fetishy and like you also the main character's ex-wife was just this bitchy like mean-spirited cheating like loose woman and I was like this is disgusting, like, I don't even remember when this book was written, but this is, even back then, it had to be so, like, chauvinistic and gross, and I'm, I, I can't even imagine, I'm sure Steve Alton isn't, like, disgustingly sexist in real life, but the way his female characters come across, he, the way he writes women is just so made me want to barf. But other than that, there were genuinely times in this book where I laughed and it wasn't intentional, I don't think. There is, okay, this is probably a spoiler, so if you want, you can skip ahead um, to when the next book cover flashes on the screen. But okay, so there is a scene in this book where it's completely removed from the plot. It's like it's like near the end, and it's it, it flashes from like the characters that have been focused on through the whole book to a completely new set of characters, and they're at this surfing competition, and it follows these these guys, these two brothers, I think, and they are in the ocean surfing, trying to win a surfing competition, and the Meg, who's the giant prehistoric shark comes racing up and like it's just it's like this weird teen high school movie it doesn't make any sense I was just like what the hell is going on and I poor say I was laughing the whole time because I was like what and I was absolutely like the plot was wacko like it just didn't like coalesce it wasn't it 
it wasn't like one successful plot. It just was all over the place. And I was like, I don't even know what's going on, but it's kind of boring. It did get really boring at parts. Um, and my other complaint is that the main character felt like a stand-in for the author. He was like an ex-Navy SEAL who was like super buff and like all these women wanted him and he was also like super intelligent and I was like Gary Stu. Like he has a self insert like no doubt and I just kind of felt awkward reading him thinking about Steve Alton at the same time. One thing I can say for this book is the science part is like so cool. Like learning about megalodons and also just like sharks in general like there are descriptions of like the sensory organs and sharks noses and like how they swim and like the temperatures that they can survive in that part was like really really cool and I appreciated that I didn't really appreciate anything else about the book so that that I just it was but it was if you're looking for like a book that's so bad it's good I might recommend Meg by Steve Alton. I don't know. It's up to you. The second book I am going to talk about is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This is a book where the movie was better and it was just okay so the movie is great. Crazy Rich Asians if you've seen the movie like it has Constance Wu and Gemma Chan like so many good actors and actresses, just a wonderful cast. This book, I don't even know how the two like are connected. The book, Crazy Rich Asians, has no heart. I feel like by, by reading this book, I had my heart surgically removed so I could feel absolutely nothing. It, everyone is an asshole. Like nobody is likable, even the main character like no none of the characters made kind or logical decisions um like her fiance not her fiance her her boyfriend like throws her into this world of like sharks like rich people who like hate anybody who isn't like them and i'm just like okay if you did that to me i would break up with you like immediately <laughs> because the, it's overwhelming, the people are nasty, and I mean, she didn't even like, she just kind of rolled with it. I would have been out of there, like, in five seconds, but okay. And Ra I think her name is Rachel, the main character. She just, she wasn't like, she even like seemed to relate to some of the rich, nasty people, and I was just like, why? What is going on? Who are you? This isn't realistic. Like, I wouldn't want to even be around these people. <sighs> but not only that, it was just the descriptions in this book. It was like a list of designers. Like, there was no, like, good description. It was mostly just, like, well, this she was wearing a dress by like uh Alexander McQueen and her shoes were by Vera Wang and her hair was done up in a beehive style and I was like this is so boring why would I just want to read it like I'd rather read a fashion magazine honestly than this book because that's basically what it was trying to be the only thing I liked was like the descriptions of Singapore and Singaporean culture like I thought that was compelling but that was the only compelling thing in this book everything else was just like everyone was a dick and none of the descriptions were good um so I I just I don't even know why I read it all the way I just did and I hated it and I went to see Crazy Rich Asians the movie and loved it so just go see or get rent it, see Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, Gemma Chan has a new movie out called Mary Queen of Scots. She's only like a side character, but it's really good anyway. Go see that too. Support your uh, Asian actors and actresses since they are very 
uh, it's very hard for them to get parts in this white dominated Hollywood. Anyway, next book. The third book that I read this year that I hated, it was one I put up a rant review for and it is called Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Um, this book is trash and I feel bad almost saying that because Mary Shelley is like supposed to be the mother of sci-fi and also it's a classic. Like it's gotta be a classic for a reason, right? I don't know what the reason is, honestly. Um, it's just... Okay, so Victor Frankenstein is one of the worst main characters I have ever read in my entire life. He doesn't have a personality. He is just a bundle of anxiety and fever and like none none of the character descriptions and like development made me think that he was smart enough number one to create a monster and number two to hunt that monster down for years and years. He was just so boring and I like wanted to slap him most of the time which is I didn't like him he's one of my least favorite characters of all time I, the the plot was also super bad like of course the most interesting part of Frankenstein is the fact that he creates a monster out of dead people parts right that's like the first like 50 pages of the book the rest is just him running around like and there's murder and it's not even fun murder it's just like everyone's sad all the time what is going on today i'm trying to film shouldn't everyone know that anyway the plot just dragged it was so just uninteresting there was nothing about this book that made me want to keep reading but I did it anyway for feminism <laughs> and Mary Shelley and science fiction also just the characters the other characters besides Victor Frankenstein were just so unrealistic like I felt like it was just like a constant state of misery no one seemed to call Victor Frankenstein out on the fact that he was like a weak little baby and say like hey maybe you should stop like getting sick every time one wrong thing happens in your life like I kind of relate to that like every time something bad happens in my life I want to collapse and never get up off the ground that's just not how life works and that's apparently how Victor Frankenstein's life works like how is he a rich dude like but he never did anything except study I don't understand I don't understand rich people this is a obviously a theme since I didn't understand the rich people and crazy rich Asians either but um yeah the only thing that saved this book was Mary Shelley's writing like her writing is actually really good her descriptions of like setting beautiful gorgeous um I want to visit Switzerland now my camera cut me off so anyway I don't know where I was um Okay, the next book I have to talk about is another classic, and this is the, the, the weirdest classic to me because I don't understand how it became a classic, and it is A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Maybe this is, like, controversial, but I hate Sherlock Holmes. He's, like, arrogant for no reason. The whole thing of like being a mentalist and like being able to notice like really small things because you know a lot is done way better with Hercule, Hercule Poirot from Agatha Christie's books. Like I didn't even like the first Hercule Poirot book but it is done so much better than in Sherlock Holmes books because Sherlock's home, Sherlock Holmes just cavorts around and doesn't tell anybody anything. The mystery wasn't good. Like, it's just a dude. I mean, it's just like, there's like German on a wall written in blood or something. I was like, who even cares? Just say it's a murder. Try to look for the murderer. 
but he had to be like, it's a mystery. And like, I can't honestly understand why anybody puts up with him. He's just rude and like so full of himself and it's for no reason. Like I didn't, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle doesn't present any good reason why Sherlock Holmes is just so good at what he does. Like, I he's just unlikable to me and arrogant and I don't know. The only truly interesting part of this book didn't even include Sherlock Holmes or John Watson in it. There's, the mystery apparently needs to be like added to by like this weird like flashback to the American West and there's Mormons or something and um, there's like a, a, an attempt at escape and it was so weird and but it was the only interesting part of the book and that just proved to me how much I disliked this and just don't read this if if you you if you get what I'm saying it's not it's not a classic worth reading to be honest that could be totally subjective read whatever you want just I'm never picking up another Sherlock Holmes book again. Last one is one that I wanted to like so bad because apparently this author wrote a really good book with LGBT representation um, and I just I wanted to be like even this even though this has like minimal LGBT representation I wanted to like it anyway just because the author seems like or from all of the hype it got it just seemed like it was really good and that is The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin O'Leary Sands and I hope I pronounced that right. This I think it was the hype. I think it was overhyped and I just read it and then was like this isn't as good as everyone says it is. Benjamin O'Leary Sands is apparently like a famous or like award-winning poet and the writing like the 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 wording in this book is so simplistic and like not interesting and the way it, that teenagers talk just is not relatable to how I was when I was a teenager even though I know this was written in like 2016 or 2017 maybe it's just it that's not the way teenagers talk like that is not realistic dialogue for teenagers and I thought it was a little silly I also just like didn't connect with the plot there's like a sexual assault plot line there's a dying grandparent plot line none of it was anything that I could like even when I haven't experienced something I can connect with a story but I just was unable to feel anything for these characters or for this story and the fact that so many people connected to Aristotle and Dante whatever the rest of the title is I'm just like I'm questioning if I should even pick up that book because this was such a letdown and I am disappointed um so that's all the books I have today. I didn't read a lot of books in 2018, so I didn't have like a giant pile to choose from. Um, the next video I'll put up is probably going to be my best books of 2018. Um, so look forward to that, I guess. Um, but if you've read any of these books, I'd honestly want to hear your opinion if you agree with me or like seriously disagree with me. I'd love to know. Um, and until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye!